Hi everyone, Russ Cottier here at Harrison's International Studio in the UK. Today I'm thrilled to introduce Mixbus 11, the latest version of Harrison's analog console inspired digital audio workstation. For half a century, Harrison Audio has been instrumental in shaping the sounds of some of the biggest records in history. Their consoles have been at the heart of recording studios worldwide, contributing to timeless albums by artists like Michael Jackson, Led Zeppelin, Fleetwood Mac, Steely Dan, Johnny Cash, and many more. Introducing Mixbus 11, a fully featured music production suite that builds on Harrison's 50 year legacy of producing the world's finest recording consoles. It brings Harrison's legendary analog console inspired sound into a user friendly digital audio workstation. Mixbus 11 is unique from other doors in that it uses a traditional style console workflow, delivering a simple yet professional sounding production process, allowing you to make great sounding music quickly and easily. So let's explore why Mixbus is such a game changer, and most importantly, why you should be making music with Mixbus 11. So maybe you've just started recording and you've had a go at some of the digital audio workstations available, ranging from super simple like GarageBand to the more complex and advanced digital audio workstations. But option paralysis has set in. Perhaps you've seen big lists of EQ plugins that you could possibly use, wondering which is better, which will give me the better sound. Well, back in the day when people were using exclusively analog consoles to mix, that wasn't even an, a consideration, it wasn't an option. Uh, the EQ was the EQ that was on the console. Yes, you could get some outboard, but even the biggest records from people like ABBA and Michael Jackson were all mixed essentially with the EQ from the console. So this is what we've done in Mixbus 11. The options are selected for you, so the whole sound is consistent. Everything works together really nicely. Um, this kind of console workflow may seem complicated because there are lots of knobs and buttons, but effectively, uh, there's one knob per function. So we know that when we reach for this knob on screen, it's going to give us the same response every time. And you will get used to those EQs and you'll be using them instinctively. It's a much better way to operate than having to pull in a plugin and then select which EQ is best for each channel and so on. Um, this is the way records have traditionally been made for decades. And we've tried to implement this in Mixbus 11 uh, to make life easier for the musician who just wants to get out there and actually get recording. Mixbus 11 comes with a really nice, clear and effective graphical user interface. In the top right hand corner, we have these four buttons, the cue, record, edit and mix. And they take us through different stages that we might want to uh, implement whilst recording a track. The cue window is really based around samples and loops. It allows us to create music by launching those samples and loops. Uh, so that's the ideal place for electronic music production uh, to start. The uh, record window, we just click here, record, and this gives us more of a multi-track recording view. We can see the waveforms coming in at the bottom and a really simple block view of what's being recorded. It takes some of the uh, distracting features away and it acts more like a sort of a tape machine effectively. In a nice traditional way, it takes away the complication and the stress while you're actually doing the tracking. If we move over to the edit window, you'll be very familiar with this kind of view. We've got a normal edit window view with our waveforms, our regions. We can go in we can do all sorts of different types of edits uh, if needs be um, and really start the mix from this point. As you can see at the bottom, I have got the uh, edges selected. Um, the bottom edge shows us a breakdown of the channel strip that we have selected uh, and then it just gives us really information about where the mixer settings are. Uh, it is a large format, uh, kind of like a 500 series format. But as we go into the mix window, we see a different view, more like a console. Um, all the EQs are there, nice and visible. I can skip to gate, I can skip to comp, and sends, that kind of thing. So as I go through my mix, all the buttons are there. It's one knob per uh, function, so I can just see exactly what each knob does. Really super simple, uh, and it gets you to the point where you're doing your mix nice and quickly. 
welcome to the mix window of Mixbus 11. Now, as you can see, the window kind of looks like a traditional analog console. We've got a, uh, a section at the top which gives us our different processors. And these can be dragged into different orders if we want to make changes. But it comes preloaded with a really great setup to start with. We've got a gate, we've got an EQ, we have compression and a fader. All the normal kind of things you'd see in a really top-end professional mixing console. So as I move down to the middle section here, I can choose which of these processors I'm looking at. We've got compression, gate, EQ, uh, immersive audio, if we're doing an immersive audio project. Uh, we've got in and record. We can actually make comments on the tracks here, which is really nice. We can type things. Um, and we've got a sends uh, view. So let's have a look at the EQ. Uh, it looks like an actual Harrison console EQ and behaves very much similarly. Now, the great thing about having a consistent EQ across your whole mixer is that you get a consistent sound and you're not spending hours agonizing over which EQ to use. I can tell you that when we make records on analog consoles, as has been done for many decades, there is no question as to what EQ you're going to use on each track. It's usually whatever's on the console. Now, we do have the option of flipping uh, the flavor slightly if you prefer to work on an SSL 9000 console, you can use the uh, option uh, to select your SSL 9K EQ. Uh, everything else uh, behaves in exactly the same way. We can click on the processor, we can roll our scroll wheel over the knobs or drag however we want to make changes. And the changes are really clear and intuitive with a single one knob per function operation. So each function just has a button or a knob and it's labeled super simple. As we move down, we see the normal kind of things, pan, a master fader button that sends the mix for that specific uh, track to the master fader. Uh, we've got trim, we've even got a drive control to add a little bit of extra saturation. The uh, metering is really useful as well because it shows us how much compression and gate is being applied as well as signal level. But let's have a little deeper look into this sends function because this is where it gets really interesting. You can see the sends uh, go to various mix buses 1 to 12. I've actually labeled some of my mix buses and it comes up on the screen here. So the first one is drums. And instead of sending straight to the master bus, I'm just going to send to the drums bus. So all these drums are going to go to the drums bus and I can process them as a group there. Why is that useful? Well, it just means they get a more consistent, coherent sound. We can EQ them, we can compress them, and we can even use this drive function in the mix bus strip. So yes, I mentioned mix buses. Well, these are the mix buses on the right. We can use them for drum buses, we can use them for vocals, we can use them for guitars to group each section of the mix together so we can kind of mix in context. Let's say you want some more guitars, well, the easiest way to do that is to make sure they're all grouped together and we can push that guitar track up a little bit, push that fader. Um, we can use the other mix buses for echo returns, uh, for reverb, for delays, all that kind of thing. They all then go on to the master bus, which is the main output. As you would have on any normal mixing console, I've got a big red fader here on this Harrison 32 Classic. Um, on the digital audio workstation, there's a big fader on the end that we can push up and down to get more or less level. And again, the master fader has a drive control, basic three band EQ, a compressor, a limiter, all that kind of stuff to really give you the sound of a classic record from a digital audio workstation. So let's have a look at the transport bar, which we find at the top of the uh, Mixbus 11 workstation. We've got nice, big, clear buttons for stop, play, loop, and record. And as we hover over, there are tooltips, of course. Now you may see at the bottom right-hand corner of these blocks, uh, we have some other options available as well. So return to last, playback, start when stopped. Um, there's uh, an option for very speed that we can go into. 
uh, and you can actually record and play back at various speed, which is a really useful tool for creative music creation. On the record button, we have a few options for different record modes, as you can see here, and punch in and punch out uh, locations. As we move over to the metronome section, we see enable and disable metronome with this nice big clear button. We've got the uh, functionality can be controlled with the other options here. We've got tempo, we've got time signature, and we have a large primary clock counter, which we can select in different uh, time modes. So bars and beats, time code, minutes and seconds, all that kind of stuff. As we move over to the right, we see some buttons for adding and removing and navigating through markers. So I might just add a marker here, and maybe I want to add a marker here, and we can navigate through them nice and simply. You can actually see this large window at the top is called the locator, and that shows us at the full extent of our project and the different markers within that. So maybe we have a project with some verses or choruses, or maybe we have a full live performance and we can skip between the different songs from that live performance. It's a really useful tool that lets us navigate nice and quickly around the uh, workstation. Um, we've got clear peaks, we've got clear solos, we've got a mute option, and we have all of our preferences available just at the click of a button. Even monitor, mute, dim, and mono options, which are really common things that you wanna do when you're working in uh, the, uh, the workstation and you're in the edit window specifically. As we move over to the far right, we see the edges section. We can choose to display or hide the various edges, uh, which essentially are side panes. They can show us um, various track options, uh, a pricey of the actual mixer, or a more in-depth view at the bottom, showing us the actual parameters of that mixer in a larger format, so we can really get in there and make some changes nice and easily. So overall, the transport window is nice and clear and gives us all the key functions that we're gonna use on a regular basis uh, right up there so we can just click on them and they're ready to go. It's a really great way of keeping the workflow of your session moving without having to dive into submenus and worry about settings. One of my favorite features of Mixbus 11 is the new focus channel strip. Uh, by clicking the edges control on the far right, we can access our bottom pane, which then gives us uh, a focus channel strip of whatever track we are actually selecting. Now, this is really great because it gives you a larger view of the mixer in a more kind of 500 series presentation. So we've got uh, our main fader, we've got our mute, solo, all those kinds of things. We've got our sends, we've got an EQ, uh, leveler in this case, it's a type of compressor, and our mix bus gate. And these are presented in large format, so they're nice and clear to see and uh, really accessible, really usable, and really functional. The focus channel strip is particularly useful if you're working on different size screens because it just gives you a few more options in terms of actually getting in there and seeing the exact settings that you're using. Mixbus 11 is ideal for immersive mixing and offers the opportunity to export .adm files for you to upload to your favorite streaming platforms and provide immersive Dolby Atmos mixes for your listeners. Once you've selected immersive panning in the session menu, our mixer completely changes and we see this immersive panning option. There's loads of different functionality where you can place sounds around the uh, 3D perspective for the Dolby Atmos mix. You can even use a simple pair of headphones and the binaural renderer to create mixes for your main Dolby Atmos output. Mixbus 11 is great for editing. When I'm editing, I tend to use the smart editing tool, which changes the cursor depending upon where in a specific 
region I'm hovering my mouse. So we've got trim, we've got range select, and we've got grab, for instance. In fact, we can now add effects to individual regions. I simply click on the region I want to work on, and as we can see, I've applied the SSL and native flex verb. This gives me the option of applying a plugin to a specific section of a track without having to worry about automating it on and off. It's great for things like telephone effects or creative reverb effects, maybe even delays, etc. Mixbus 11 gives you plenty of tools that make your life easier. I'm gonna mention just a few of them. First off, we have the Polarity Optimizer. It's great for when you're recording live drums, for example. You can select a bunch of tracks and arrange, just type Optimize Polarity. As you can see, a window pops up and it shows us what difference we would get overall if we change the polarity of some of our channels. Very useful for drum mixing, and we can actually just click through between the different options and audition how that changes the sound. It can be very, very useful for getting a tight, coherent drum sound. We move on to the mixer window, and we have mixer scenes. Now, this is a really nice feature that lets you jump between different setups of the mixer. As you can see, I've got the mixer scenes on the uh, right-hand edge, and I can simply jump between different mixer scenes that I have saved to, uh, to give different feels. Maybe I wanna use them for different songs, maybe I want to use them for choruses and verses. It's a really nice way to operate the mixer window inside Mixbus 11 to give you some real flexibility. VCAs. Now the VCA fader is a very common feature on analog mixing consoles but it's not something that we necessarily see a lot of in digital audio workstations, but it's a very powerful tool. If I simply create a new VCA master, I can assign this VCA to control various faders. So I'm gonna choose VCA one, and I'm gonna choose several different faders within my session. And as you can see, as I move it up and down, I get control over those faders. Now, if I move these faders separately, it doesn't affect the other faders in that VCA group. I can get my balance and then I can change the level again. It's really great for if you've got lots of vocals or lots of drums and you just want a bit more control over them. It's a slightly different approach to using the mix buses, but it's a really nice tool. The other great feature as well is this spill button that lets us click and show all of the channels or mix buses that are in that VCA fader group. Mixbus 11 has some great export features. I'm gonna mention some of the really useful things you can do here. So if we go to a session export, we can actually click stem export. Now that is a very useful tool for collaboration. It lets us pick how we want to export all of the content, we can apply effects that we've done in our mix, so our stems add up to the final mix, or we can just export individual mix bus outputs or various selections of our individual channels. A really nice tool, and it also lets us choose all the different formats of how we want to export this and the different time spans we wish to export. I've never seen a more powerful export tool in any workstation, and I use this on a daily basis. So there you have it, an overview of Mixbus 11. To get started with Mixbus, head over to the Harrison website via the link in the description to find out everything you need to know to start making music. It's become a game changer for me personally, having all the tools you need to begin making music quickly on hand. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.